Welcome back guys. In this video, we'll be talking about heterochromatin and euchromatin in details. So what are heterochromatins and what are euchromatins? So let's talk about it. Uh, heterochromatins and euchromatins, first things you should know about both these terms that they are chromatin. They are not, we are not talking about exactly chromosomes. We are talking about further breakdown structure of chromosomes that are chromatin, right? So if you look at chromatin here, chromatin means DNA plus proteins. Protein means histone, right? Histone and DNA combined together is called as chromatin. This is the first thing you should know. Except for that, the second thing you should know is the image, the picture. If I draw it, uh, the drawing of transmission electron microscopy, you will see something like this. Like this. And you'll also see certain things like like this. So this is a kind of drawing I try to draw logically. This is the nucleus of a cell. And if you look at it, this outside section is the nuclear envelope. And I've seen nuclear envelope. This is the nuclear envelope. And if you look at here, in this nuclear envelope, Inside all these sections that we see here, all these regions, the dark regions that you'll see, if I if I stain them with this color, this is the dark regions. So after the staining, or let's say with, without a transmission, we just do the light microscopy also. You'll we'll see after the dark staining, you'll see something like this, and some some of the darker regions in middle scattered very few but most of it surrounding so this dark section that we see here this is called heterochromatin and this light regions are called euchromatin in this image now why this heterochromatin is darker stained why euchromatin is lightly stained the answer this heterochromatin is tightly packed. This is very, very tightly packed. Euchromatin is lightly packed. Euchromatin lightly packed, heterochromatin very, very tightly packed. Now, heterochromatins are very compact structures. And those structures are wrapped around histones and all these things. They are less functional. They don't function. They are not open. The DNA that is present in this chromatin region is not that much open for the transcription, replication processes. While euchromatin is the active portion of chromatin, active portion of the chromosome, which functions properly, produces mRNA and do the replication stuff. Now, if you look at here, this heterochromatin, this is divided in two different sections. One is constitutive heterochromatin. And the one is facultative heterochromatin. The constitutive heterochromatin means this heterochromatins, most of this constitutive section of heterochromatins, they do a very much important role of structural feature like the centromere, the telomere of the chromosome are majorly formed by this constitutive heterochromatin section. They form the centromere telomere. And as they form the centromere and telomere, the gene sequences that are present right beside this, this constitutive heterochromatin kind of changes. So this constitutive heterochromatin actually, actually controls the expression of certain genes that are present just beside this. On the other hand, facultative heterochromatins are those heterochromatins which are completely worthless, I mean functionless. Why? Because those heterochromatins, they are mostly silenced by histone deacetylation. Or methylation or any other events. They are silenced. 
they are no longer functional they are completely silenced they are not giving any structural role like centromere or telomere stuff they are completely functionless this is the idea if you look at here and these heterochromatins are found surrounding the nuclear envelope surrounding the nucleus outside in the middle we have the light colored stain that is the euchromatin euchromatin is functional this is active and what does euchromatin do they have all those different things they have all those process of they are open the dna in euchromatin regions are open they are not turned they are not coiled with histones they are histones are taken away they are now free for the transcription for the for the future stages for the dna replication while faculty refrigerator chromatin some of them are also attached with histones Now it depends in a cell which part of the chromatin is going to be U, which part is going to be hetero. It depends on the control, right? But also sometimes the section which is present as a facultative heterochromatin, sometimes it can turn it back uh, and can be functional. And that is under a tight regulation that's called the genetic regulation with the help of the histone chemical modification. Like modification, like acetylation. If the histone acetylation takes place in the N-terminal tail, in this faculty of heterochromatin region, that heterochromatin can be uncoiled, that DNA can be uncoiled from the histone, and that DNA can be accessible for the transcription. Right? So that thing may result, but actually this process works like this. Euchromatin is a completely functional active site, heterochromatin is non-functional region. So this is about the heterochromatin and euchromatin. I think you understand the process. Hit the like button, subscribe because to get more videos, you need to subscribe to get notifications from my channel. And, so, and, and other thing is that you need to share it a lot because sharing is very important habit. I am sharing this, so you should share. At least you don't need to record a video, just need to hit a button. That's it. So do it. Thank you.